Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're looking at unguided bombing. As with just about everything in the A10C, it's highly configurable. There are lots of options and parameters we can set. So I'm going to squeeze as much as I can into about a quarter of an hour. So let's get cracking first of all to the armament screen and let's see what we can have. Now we can have bombs on all of these 11 stations. It's an absolutely amazing, probably the best bombing platform and the variety of bombs we can have is massive too. So I'm just going to pick a random station. Number three will go over the unguided bombs. So we've got a BDU-33. This is a training bomb and this variant has three of them to one pylon. GBU is a guided bomb. We're not interested in that. This is three times Mark 82s. They are a 500 pound unguided slick low drag bomb. Then we've got three times per pylon Mark 82 Air. These are parachute high drag Mark 82s. These are illumination flares. We're not going to go over those. So we're going to go over those in another video. BDU. These are three more training bombs. We've got the 50 HD high drag, 50 HD uh, LD low drag and the LGB laser guided. So we're only interested in these two here which are unguided and I think from memory they're 500 pounders but please correct me if I'm wrong and we move on to the cluster bomb munitions so 103 105 87 and 97 so these munition dispensers drop from the plane they explode above the target then the munitions drop down onto the targets and do the damage so the 87 anti-personnel anti-light armor the 97 is anti-heavy armor i.e. tanks the 103 is a INS guided wing corrected version of the 87 and the 105 is an INS guided wind corrected version of the 97. GBUs, these are all guided units and we're not going to look at these today. Mark 82, as above, just one single Mark 82 per pylon, 500 pounds slick bomb, unguided, 82 air, the parachute variant. Mark 84, the 2000 pounder, slick, unguided, and we've got more illuminations down here. So we're going to go for a fairly simple loadout that's going to allow us to best show off the different ways of setting up the bombs, the different ways of the dropping them, rippling, single drop, pair drops, and whatnot. So, we're going to on 5, we're going to go Mark 82, air times 3, and we'll do the same on pylons 4, 7, and 8, so we can do a big ripple, low level CCRP ripple. Okay, next on pylons 3 and 9, why don't we have a single Mark 84, 2000 pounder, on two, I'm going to put, to make it slightly asymmetric, and it doesn't matter if it's an asymmetric loadout, we're going to have our pod, our lightning pod for targeting, just to make the CCRP targeting a little easier. And remaining pylons 1, 10, and 11, why don't we populate with them with uh, CBU 97s? Why not? Okay, so 12 Mark 82 Airs, 2 Mark 84s, and 3 times CBU 97s. Let's go with that. That makes us well overweight. Bird, who gives a poo? Okay, while we're waiting for that, let's go and check out the controls we're going to be using for today. And it's not a massive amount to drop the bombs. We're going to be using that, either press or press and hold, depending on what type of release we're going to be doing. To cycle between weapon profiles, we've got DMS left and DMS right. But when it comes to speed creation for CCRP dropping, we're going to have TMS forward. That's either going to be a press or it's going to be a push and hold for long. Change our master mode. If we're going to do that, we've got the master mode change there. Change our soy or sensor of interest. We're going to need our coolie switches at a minimum. Coolie switch up and coolie switch right. And we're going to need to slay a slew the TGP around to find a target. And we're going to use blah, 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 access commands. And it's the ones that I'm. you can see wiggling there. Hotas, slew, horizontal and vertical. And that should do us. Okay, there is our horrendously heavy loaded A10. It should be a good run. Let's get everything set up. So as far as the AHCP panel, the only thing we're going to want is master arm on. We'd usually do that in the air, but just to make things easy for the video, we'll do that. And we're going to need our TGP on as well because we're going to be using that. So let's set up our DSMS. So the first thing we need to do is to load or populate our DSMS. This is the same every time we load up the stores on this aircraft. So we're going to press and hold stat. OSB, we're going to click load, we're going to put stat. So we've moved the load screen down to here, we can now press it. I'm going to load all, just because it's what I always do, skip time. Everything is loaded now, so we've now got a populated, updated DSMS, we can click on it now. So we now have our stores, and if we look, we can see our different pylons equipped with the different bombs. There is a quantity, 3, Mark 82 airs fixed uh, in high drag. 
Mark 84, one, CBU 97, one, lightning pod there. Next, we've got to set up our profile. So each type of weapon is going to automatically generate a profile, which we're going to use to actually employ the weapons. But we need to go and set those profiles up because there will be things that need setting up for these bombs, like fusing and other parameters. So we're going to click on the profile. You can see we've got the three different profiles here, the CBU 97, the Mark 84, and the Mark... 82 hydrax so first of all let's set up the cbu 97 we can cycle up and down the different profiles with this here and when we want to view a profile we go to view profile this is the profile for the cbu 97 that we have so the first options we're going to go through are here how what type of drop are we going to do are we going to do a single are we going to do pairs ripple single ripple pairs so a single is where one press of the weapon release will drop one unit one canister pairs is it will drop two canisters we have to have obviously have at least two equipped a uh, ripple singers where we push and hold the weapon and release and we will drop one after the other in a configurable ripple and ripple in pairs where it's the same as a ripple but they drop in pairs now for this because we've got three i'm just going to keep it simple with single one press per per canister drop next what type of fusing do you want nose and tail fusing nose only fusing tail only fusing nose tail just seems to be the most efficient all round unless you specifically want the penetration of a tail fuse next what mode do you want to drop it in ccip or ccrp there are actually two modes within ccip we're just going to look at the main mode in ccip though um i suppose i better explain that ccrp continuously calculated impact point essentially that works by displaying where if we drop the munition at a certain point the munition will strike the ground and we just press the button to release continuously ca calculated release point is different we in this case hand over control of dropping the bomb to the aircraft and it will decide the release point for us depending on azimuth speed height and whatnot so for this one just keep it simple we'll do a dive bombing in ccip next we've got settings and a whole lot of settings settings now these settings will change depending on which weapon we've got selected so let's see what we've got at the moment change settings so we've got sem this is the escape maneuver from the bomb run we've currently got climb selected which is our default we've got turn exit We've got a turn level, turn maneuver, or we've got none. And we're going to stick on our default of climb. We've got des toff. That is our desired time of fall. If we wanted the bomb to fall for a particular time, i.e. 10 seconds, I don't know why you'd ever want to do this, but maybe there would be a reason. I could program in there 10 seconds, and then that would change the release moment of the bomb to coincide with that. And it would do that by changing cues on the hard for me. Minimum altitude, if I want a minimum altitude warning uh, for my bombs not to drop below certain altitudes, it's actually quite a good idea. Then I could change that. In fact, I should probably show how I could change these options. If I wanted a minimum altitude of, say, 500 feet, then I go up to the UFC here, 500, zero, zero, and minimum altitude. So that's how I could change that. Um, I don't actually want that, so I'm just going to turn that off. Next, we've got the horizontal offset of the bombs in terms of mills. A bit like a depression for a manual gun sight, a uh, bomb sight. I don't know why you would ever want to use this. The same here, but this is vertical uh, depression in this case. Again, in mills. We've got the weapon ejection velocity. I haven't tried this and I don't know what it does. And here we've got the bomb rack delay. And again, I don't really know what that is. Maybe something to do with jets in the rack. But let me know if you know more about these two as well, please. Out of interest, before I forget, we've also, when you've got a profile loaded up here, it can show you which uh, pylons it's relevant to. And that helps you realize which bombs you're, you're talking about. Pylons 1, 10 and 11 in this case. Always remember, if you ever make a change, I uh, think we have, then we are going to press save here. Otherwise, we will lose all of our changes. So before we go on to the conventional munitions, there are some other settings that we can change for the CBUs, the cluster bomb, which I'm going to show now. So if we went out back to the main DSMS, we went to the inventory, we clicked on one of these CBU 97, so let's go for that guy there. We clicked CBU, we clicked CBU 97 because that's what it is. We've got some extra stuff here. We've got whether it's got a radar fuse or not, we'd always leave that as yes. I don't know why we would change that. We've got function time, type in seconds, we believe, from when the canister munition separates to when the parachutes deploy on the sub munitions then we've got the height of function here that we can change in feet so this is above ground level how many feet at which the sub munition canister kind of separates and the sub munitions come out so currently set 1800 feet you can change that up to i think 3000 feet the higher up that you set it um, then the more spread there will be on the sub munitions so that's something to take 
into account but remember obviously when you're dropping these uh, canisters these cpu 98s you've got to drop above this height here above the ground so if i set it to 3000 then i want to bomb minimum my minimum minimum bomb height drop wants to be about 4000 so it's just something to bear in mind later on and then we can go back to the profiles and now let's go to the mark 84 profile view profile we're going to drop these in a pair so one click of the bottom this bottom button is going to drop both nose tail fusing as usual i'm going to do this in a ccip dive and i don't want to mess around with any of the other settings so we're going to save that profile next we've got the mark 82 high drag profile we are going to view the profile we're going to drop these in a ripple uh why don't we do singles ripple nose tail fusing ripple quantity we're going to do the whole amount which is 12 isn't it so one two ripple of 12 interval between each drop and we can change that if we want with the ufc but 75 feet sounds fine to me in this case and the drop mode here rather than ccip dive bombing we're going to do a level bombing probably at low altitude to take advantage of our high drag bombs because they're uh, obviously slow dropping we can drop them at low level and we'll use ccrp for that and you'll see the reason for that later right we're going to save that we don't want to mess around with any of the other settings so that is our profile setup I'm going to leave that in the main DSMS page so we can see what we're selecting. Now, out of interest, uh, let's show how to select the different profiles now. So, as standard, we'll be on nav mode in our HUD, and that's no good for us. So, we're going to press the master button control. We can now have guns. We can now have CCIP. We can have CCRP, and we can have back to nav again. So, let's go to CCIP to begin with, and let's choose our profile for uh, Mark 84. Fours, which are CCIP so we're going to use DMS left and right to toggle this chap here this is our bomb profile currently it's just neutral it's nothing well nothing selected so if I go DMS left you can see well that is the mark 82 so we don't want that next let's go to the mark 84 it says mark 84 so we can actually change the name of that and when we were setting up the profiles there I don't see why you'd ever want to but we could so we've got the mark 84 selected now you can see it's got both pylons selected that are relevant and it's automatically put us in ccip mode so we don't actually need to use the master mode to change between ccrp and ccip it will do it automatically when we select the relevant profile because we've set it up in here let's do dms left again now we've got the cbu 90 7 ah, we've got invalid fusing so we'll have to go and look at that again in a second left again and we've got our mark 82s and again it's put it in ccrp here so that's how we're going to check that we're going to go back to nav now just let's go back into the profiles to fix our cluster bombs they were that one there view profile nose tail and let's go to uh, nose save back to root let's check up here and now it's happy we're going to go back to nav node we're going to take off, find some bad guys, deploy our weapons, and talk about the way we're going to employ the weapons. Okay, we're in the air now. Everything's set up. Everything's happy. If you wonder why the HUD's a different mode, it's because I turned it to night mode by accident. I'm going to turn it back on there today. That's it. Now we're going to go find some bad guys. There they are. Targets. It's a bunch of mm, kind of medium armoured vehicles, annoyingly, right on the corner of a road. So... Uh, so be it. Uh, what we're going to do now is talk about a bomb profile. We're going to head four to five miles away. We're going to head up to 5,000 feet AGL. We're then going to dive down onto the target. According to the manual, flight manual, between 10 and 45 degrees. Personally, I prefer between 10 and 20 degrees, but it's just that's just what I prefer. Uh, regards speed, generally speaking, you're going to want to go as fast as possible to minimise your time over the target. As we're diving down on the target, we'll be presented with CCIP symbology and for a manual release drop on the target. And we'll go through that once we're presented with it. Regards the altitude that we're going to drop at, it's going to actually depend on the on what the target is and their defensive capabilities. So this target, they are they have almost no defences. They've got grenade launchers, so I can go as close as I want. But if we're dro dropping high drag bombs, sorry, low drag bombs, like we're going to drop first of all we want a million minimum ceiling of 1000 feet so we don't want to drop below a thousand feet agl we can drop a lot higher but the higher we drop obviously the less the accuracy is going to be so i'm going to basically drop as close as i can to a thousand feet but not exceed a thousand feet now if these were zu-23s or vulcan guns or something like that we don't want to get anywhere near a thousand uh, feet we're going to drop several thousand feet because we don't want to go near their guns so i don't want to tell you what altitude you drop at because it's going to depend on your target so let's get out to distance the reason we're going four or five miles is because we want to get a good solid run at these things we don't want to turn around now and having to be kind of scooting and skating left and right at the last minute to try and get ourselves on target well plenty of time we don't want to rush ourselves. Okay, 5,000 feet, we're turning in now, about five miles away. Now, regards 
uh, kind of choosing the target. We can, if we like, select the target properly by creating a SPI, either by a hard or by our TGP or whatever, and bomb that. We don't have to with CCIP. We can just go against an unselected target, and that's what we're going to do here. We're not going to lose any accuracy. It's easier to find the target if you have a SPI on the target, but we don't need to. We're going to show that off now. When it comes to dropping our CTRP mode with the Mark 82 Airs, you'll see that we do need a SPI, a proper target selected. I'm just going to go full power all the way. There's no chance of overspeeding this jet, obviously. It's an A-10. Now, when we get on our final dive, again, between 10 and 20 degrees, I prefer, we want to keep the wings as level as we possibly can um, so that we don't reduce the accuracy of our CCI pip pipper, which we'll see in a minute. In fact, we start, start, better start getting everything armed up. So, master mode to CCIP and I'm just going to show we can DMS left and right to select the different bombs. We're going to go for the Mark 84, as you can see there. We're on manual release mode there. And there is our time in seconds or that the bombs will drop. So if I drop them, it will take uh, 18 seconds to drop. Now, the CCRP plumb line here is currently dashed. That means, well, we don't want to use it yet. When it becomes solid and we have a shooting queue or a dropping queue at the bottom of it, then we're actually in parameters to drop, and we'll see that shortly. When it comes to actually dropping the bombs, I'm going to press and hold weapon release until I can confirm that both weapons have dropped. They should drop simultaneously as I've set them up for pairs and nose and tail, as you can see there. They are Mark 84s, so they're 2,000 pounders, so I'm going to add a little bit of height uh, to my minimum ceiling. I'm going to say 1,500 500 feet just to make sure because there's always a chance of damaging myself with such powerful bombs right in we go full power then neutralize my trim i don't want to dive quite yet let's get some more yeah i think we can dive now so we're going to position our path vector here at the angle on the target at the angle that we want so it's 10 degrees dive that's 15 degrees dive and we want to come keep wings nice and level if we can now we're just waiting for our cue and here it is so uh, we can see our queue here. It's going to work its way up our plumb line. We have a ranging bar here. So the inside is kind of hard to see because it's merged with this triangle guide at the moment. But that mark there is showing our range, slant range, to the point where we've selected. And this dot here, the actual pipper, is the point where if I drop the bombs now, that is where they'll impact. We're now going to maneuver the jet so that we get the pipper here just on our target where we want to bomb. We're going to bomb uh, above 1500 feet for safety as usually on our ingress and our egress we will be flaring have a flare profile set up but we're not going to be doing that today just to keep things simple and then pull out in whichever way we're going to pull out and it's as simple as that so let's get it done i'm going to zoom into the hud for mac maximum accuracy and walk it over and i'm going to drop them right there off they go pull up down go the beauties That was pretty accurate, went exactly where I wanted. The CCIP, or and CCIP, is really good in this. Next, we're going to select our, with our DMS, we're going to select our CBU 97s. So we're going to go around and do pretty much the same thing. The bomb profile is going to be exactly the same. Okay, we're heading in now, and I'm going to get a little bit of extra altitude because I know what's coming up, and you possibly don't, but we'll see. And now we're going to head down. Now, we have to bear in mind that these CBUs have got a completely different drop profile to those Mark 84s. So what we're going to find is, as that we go down an angle, we're going to get steeper and steeper and steeper, but this line is not going to go solid, and our queue is probably not going to appear. Pull up, pull up. That's a pretty good example of that. And as it turns out, we find it almost impossible to drop these CBUs uh, from a CCIP. You'd have to be in such a steep angle and from up really high, because remember, these bombs have to explode a certain amount above the target and plus they're very slow drop as well they're not aerodynamic that shows us that we can't really use ccip for these plus simulations we're going to have to use ccrp so that's fine we're going to change our mind now we're going to put our hud back to nav for now and we're going to jump in to our dsms we're going to look at our profiles and we're going to change this profile the cbu 97 here to ccrp we're going to save and we're going to go around now for a CCRP drop. So we've got our CBU-97s, we've got CCRP, it's automatically brought up for us. Now for a CCRP drop, we're going to have to select a SPI, a sensor point of interest. If you like, it's a target on the ground, on the terrain. There are several ways of doing that, but just because it's what I'm used to doing and it's my easiest way, I'm going to use our TGP, our targeting pod. So let's get on with that. So our targeting pod is already warmed up here. This is not a targeting pod video, but I'm going to turn our TGP on here. We're going to turn to air to ground mode here. Whoops, pressed the wrong button. That was stupid of me. Okay, we're going to move in on our target now. We're going to press, 
uh, maneuvers of my ball sight of my aircraft about here is roughly above where that target smoke is. There you can see it there. I need to make my TGB soy, so coolly right along. And I'm going to TMS up short to lock it in position there. I'm then going to use my designated control controls to move it to our target more accurately. And I'm just going to fly over them. You can see we have a diamond where our speed, uh, sorry, where our target point or our TGP is now set. I'm going to designate right on that guy there that'll do we'll just get the area underneath him's fine okay so that as i oh, sorry now tms up long and hold and that is now a speed set on that target vehicle or on the terrain below him that's fine with me and we can just double check that by going to the tad pause that quickly uh, and we can see we've got our wedding cake our speed point wedding cake as i call it there so we've now got a point designated on the ground that we can do a ccrp drop Upon. So we're going to head away to our usual four or five miles to get us plenty of ingress time and then we're going to work to our CCRP symbology. So let's get on with it. Our SPI is now designated so we can move wherever we want. That SPI is designated on our navigation system so there's no chance of us losing that point. Okay, we can now see on our HUD that the uh, SPI is directly behind us and five miles so let's turn in. Regards altitude, we're going to be doing a level drop with CCRP or a very slight incline if we like. So I'm going to keep following until I see my CCRP plumb line or steering line and there it is. Right, so there is symbology to look at here. We've got our CCRP reticle here and our bomb full line here. We've got our plumb line, CCRP plumb azimuth steering line here. The name of the game is to keep this chap on this line here ideally lined up with this chap here this is the actual speed or the target that we're going to be dropping the bomb on otherwise we've got our usual symbology we've got our time of bomb drop here which won't really be relevant at the moment until we're closer we've got our profile here our release mode here so let's get onto it as we get within i think it's about six seconds of release because remember we're not going to be controlling the actual bomb drop here we're going to be pressing the button allowing the bomb to drop but when the bomb drops it's going to be controlled by the ccrp system uh, what we're going to be looking for is a countdown a countdown which will get down to about six seconds here at which point this chap the shoot queue is going to drop down the plumb line here and when that starts happening we're going to push and hold the weapon release until the bomb has dropped okay so let's get on with it let's get everything lined up Uh, this can take a bit of practice, uh, and I'm not very good at it, but we'll give it a go. So we're on that line now, so we're waiting for our countdown now. Uh, the countdown is at the top, sorry, you can see 15 seconds. It's 12 seconds. See the timing cue. Sorry, I can't talk and do this. See it dropping, press and hold weapon release. And the weapon's actually released. And only now do I release the actual weapon release button. Down to blows. So it's exploded the uh, amount, the altitude above the target that we preset earlier on. And here come the munitions down on parachutes. Going to do their damage right on the end of the convoy where I set them. Hopefully, if I've hit them, fingers crossed. Uh, there's no wind on this mission today, so I haven't had to use wind correcting me. Oh, I've slightly missed. Look, silly cut. Hey, got a couple. You can see how deadly it is um, over the spread area that we've got there. It's uh, sought out those vehicles and destroyed them. So it's incredibly powerful munition. Beautiful work. So we go back to our DSMS. We can now see that that one there was dropped now we will go around and drop these individuals again i set them up individually you can set them up in a ripple or drop them essentially at the same time next we're going to go on to rippling our 12 hydrag mark 82 airs so i'm paused now we can essentially use our current speed that's currently locked under the terrain to that guy that's now blown up i think we can use that speed and we're going to ripple essentially from him onwards down the convoy is what we're going to do so we're going to head out for our usual four or five miles we're going to come in and we can come in fairly low remember these are high drag bombs whoops all the pilot's still on so we can come in fairly low maybe about a thousand feet or something and drop these in a ripple um nothing to say until we get back on in fact we're 7.58 miles away so let's turn in so let's get uh, working first thing we need to do is select our mark 82 airs and i'm going to press dms left and right it's not working why is it not working well the reason it's not working 
is because for us to do work in the HUD, we have to make sure our HUD is soy, center of interest, the selected center. Currently, this chap here is soy. We can tell that because this is our TGP because we've got our um, box around it here, our green box around it. So if you're trying to work on the HUD and you're wondering why it's not working, this can be very frustrating. So cooly up and we can see our, our HUD is now soy because we've got a little star in it there. We can now use our DMS left and right and we can select weapons off and mark 82 APO. So, other than that, it's going to be the same symbology as we had before. It's pretty much the same target as we had before. So, I'm going to start heading in. I'm going to get myself so that I can get a nice train of bombs down those remaining targets. Okay, let's turn in and give it a, give it a run. I'm actually sl I want to move my um, TG. I want to move my speed slightly left thinking about it because those we're going to miss those other trucks otherwise. So, I'm going to go coolly right long. And I'm going to just move ever so slightly left there. How about that for a target there? We designate TMS long. Okay, so we're back to HUD and now we're going in. We're going to use the symbology exactly as we did before. Altitude, well, whatever we want really, above a thousand feet I'd say. I'm going to try and drop on the speed. So let's level out now. 17 seconds counting up on the release queue at the top. Leveling out now. 12 seconds. 6 seconds. Push and hold weapon release. Wait for the drops. We have drops. All bombs gone. Down go the beauties. wasn't amazingly, amazingly effective as you can see to be honest I dropped them way too high I dropped them about two and a half thousand feet these low drags are uh, for much lower down use there and you can see it's got the 75 feet as I requested in between them what I should have done is probably designated one of the guys right in the middle here and then dragged it over these guys and I should have done it much lower you live and you learn I'm still showing off how to do a ripple uh, I think that's everything I know I've got more bombs here but that's everything I want to show off so we've showed off how to use a pair of mark 82s dropping them in a dive approach with CCIP aiming then we've tried to drop CBUs with CCIP found that we couldn't get enough of a diver profile to use them effectively so we switched to CCRP dropped them from our medium altitude CCRP and got them more or less on target then we dropped a ripple of 12 mark 80 82 airs at a well, medium altitude run with a ripple of all 12 of 75 feet in between. That's all I've got to say on unguided bombs. I hope that helps and see you later.